Hi. So hi, welcome back. So in today we are going to talk about um questions. The biggest question regarding about my my tier list video. Alright, so let's get straight into it. Alright, so the biggest argument I've seen is people saying Fisher and Sucrose should be rated higher in the tier list and Diona should be lower. Alright, so in my personal opinion, to be fair, within all C0s, at all C0 conditions, I will remain my opinion. And I'm going to explain to you a bit by bit why at C0, Diona is literally S tier, and while others are not. Okay, so let's start with Fischl. Okay, so Fischl is off field sub DPS. So Fischl is an off field sub DPS. All right. And she can deal a great amount of damage, alright? But not the fact that they can she can like deal a lot at C0. I mean the multiplayer and scaling are there. Alright. But the problem is maintaining ER and also maintaining the uptime of the summon summon entity. Alright, so that is the biggest issue you might need to face. Right, so here are my apparent stats, alright, just for you to see. Right, so my weapon, weapon I always run on ER because like the fact that her ulti like requires 60. Alright, for those who have C6, shut the fuck up, okay? C4 legit returns you 20% of the energy, which is like 12. Okay, which is like 12, 12 energy, which is like a lot in this situation. Right, so those who have C4 above, alright, shut the fuck up. Thanks. Okay, you never know how pain a dude without C4 and above is until they actually get it. Because I use, I don't have official until I have like 900 days of my game. And that's how I get official. And then after all, I pull her on a limited character banner and I got her to C6. Yeah. So. Her damage output normally comes from two places, right? So one is Knight Rider, which is an elemental skill. There are two damage like skillings. One is when you summon. One is when you leave like the entity on field to like, attack. Okay, and next is the elemental burst. One time, um, it's a one time burst, right? So let me tell about how let me tell you about how this thing actually works, right? So this is actually pretty straightforward. You summon the entity and you leave it on the field to attack. That's what we call off field, the off field damage, right? So the elemental burst is you come on field, you use it as a one time burst, and then you leave it and then you go back, like go continue, go go to like back line. You don't have to stay on field. And the whole purpose of elemental burst is like excluding damage, you use it to refresh the duration of your summon entity. So it's like all's duration here um is like 10 seconds. If you perfectly sync this, alright, you have another 10 seconds, which means you technically only have like five seconds downtime of the skill. Right? But another problem is if you don't have enough ER in this situation, you can't charge your ulti. And therefore you can't refresh your summon entity. Therefore, if you are not in a C6 condition, alright. Or a C4 or above. Okay. So your first run, if you have enough energy, your first cycle, you can definitely have only five second downtime. But what after that? What after that? What if you don't have enough ER? You don't have enough ER to charge your elemental burst. Because as I say, most of the time she is holding like off field. And therefore the energy you charge, even though you have like 
what 160 something 180 something but when you are in back line it's not going to be exactly that amount it's going to be lower so this means that you have a chance of not charging your LP and therefore you can't keep cycle her summon entity to do off your damage right so this is why her c4 and c6 is like really important in this case all right and also the c2 the c okay let's expand her constellation first <coughs> okay so her c1 is not really too important it's for dps ratio physical dps ratio okay it says when Oz is not in present in combat, he can still watch over Fisher through his own eyes. When Fisher performs a normal attack against an opponent, Oz fires a coordinated attack, dealing damage to 22% of Fisher's attack. So this is like more to personal damage instead of like um off field damage, right? So C2 is the most important thing, alright? So it says when Night Rider is used, it deals an additional 200% attack as damage. Alright, so this is one of the constellations where her damage gets ascended a lot, okay, like extremely, and its AoE is also increased by 50%. So this is one of the constellations like that makes every official like fucking pain, a pain in the fucking ass, yes. Alright, and C3, this increases elemental skill level by 3, which is definitely the best for official because I, as I said, her whole purpose is off field DPS. So this thing will buff. Like buffs her summon entity off field. Right? So C4, one of the most crucial like one of the most crucial constellations after all. Okay. So it says when the elemental burst is used, it deals 222% of attack as electro damage to surrounding opponents. When the skill duration ends, Fisher regenerates 20% of her HP, which is 12 in 60 condition. Okay, so C5 is elemental burst level increased by 3. Okay, so it's increased by 3. It's just like higher multiplier overall. Yeah, so C6, which is the the most fucking important constellation. Okay, without this, your facial doesn't feel like facial. Okay, so what does it does? What it does is extend your summon entity's presence by 2 seconds. So it means the orange, you know, 10 seconds will become 12 seconds. And if you refresh it, they get another 12 seconds. So this means that you will have 24 seconds of uptime instead of 20 seconds. So which ends up, you only have like 1 second downtime. So you can already see like how important this constellation is. And besides that, when Oz performs coordinated attacks with your ethnic character in, in present, alright, he deals 30% of officials attack as electro damage. Alright. So, it's just like more DPS output and also like longer uptime. Alright, so someone might not understand like how important is these two seconds, alright? So, let me tell you like, Oz attacks every one second. So, there's a like chance that he will provide um particles. So, another two seconds is really crucial. In case the two, sec two remaining seconds, he just decides to generate another two particles. Then that makes a huge fucking difference. Okay. So, but there is an issue. Not everyone have C6 or C4 above official. Not everyone. Keep in mind, I say not everyone. Because I got her literally at like 900 days and something. Only I managed to C6 her at my 900 day something career. Okay, before that, my Fisher is completely fucked and I cannot do anything about it. The only thing I can do is stack ER for her. That's the only thing I can do. Yes, so that's her problem. That's why I didn't rate her on S tier is a C0 condition. Because she is Constellation deciding. It's like, if you have Constellation, she's going to be fucking OP. If you don't have, she's just going to be like fucking normal. That's the whole point of this. Okay? So next, I'll talk about Sucrose. A lot of people have been saying like, Sucrose deserves higher. I mean, yes, she deserves, but same issue with like, um, Fischl. Let's talk about her own kit first. Alright, so her elemental skill, okay, what this does is, 
she will generate a small like wind field and to pull enemy at one instance okay and her elemental burst is um you can assume um she slowly gathers like nearby enemies all right for like six seconds okay so the whole point of it is like mob gathering but it's not that efficient another whole point of sales she have is this okay when Sukos triggers a soul reaction all characters in the party with the matching element all right have their elemental mastery increased by 50 for eight seconds excluding herself okay so technically it's like every any more character just get like 50 okay and this you can get at like level 60 ascended so how important is this piece of shit is okay when the elemental skill of burst hits an opponent okay hits an opponent increases all party members excluding herself elemental mastery by an amount equal to 20 percent of sucrose elemental mastery for eight seconds okay so let's take for an example i have 500 here so i Technically, the whole team just get 100 EM. 100 something EM. Yeah, by me just hitting the enemy. Yes. So, this is how good she actually is. She can add direct EM, buff direct EM to your whole team without much requirements. All you need to do is to just hit enemy with your skill and burst. But why do I still rate her at A, not S? Okay, so constellation wise, as I said, her constellations are fucking important. Okay, so first, constellation one is already like really crucial and important. So her elemental skill gains one additional charge. Okay, so the importance of this is with this, first you get more particles. Second, you get to gen like gather, gather the mobs closer. All right. And third, you can time you can time this properly, all right. So the cooldown is like fifteen seconds, all right. So if you time it properly, you can like kind of reduce the downtime issue for this talent, all right. And her elemental burst I shouldn't say much. The energy cost is like eighty, all right. And the duration is only six seconds, and the cooldown is twenty seconds. Okay, so constellation one helps a lot in this case. Okay, besides like just more app particles and more mob gathering, it is also like it's also like help you to maintain the talent uptime. Okay, next is constellation two. The duration of your elemental burst is increased by two seconds, which means longer gathering. Alright. Longer gathering and also like longer uptime for your talent. Alright, so for C3 increases the level of your elemental skill by three. Um, it doesn't do much, just higher scaling. Okay, so constellation four. Okay, sucrose will reduce the cooldown of elemental skill by one to seven seconds for every seven normal charge attack hits. So this is RNG, no fixed time. Okay, she scored against opponents. One hit may be countered every zero point one seconds. Yeah, so this is a like a really important constellation right like it helps you to reduce your elemental skill cooldown time and so you can like proc it more okay so c5 it doesn't really matter this thing is like just multiplier okay <clears throat> next finally we have c6 if the elemental skill triggers an elemental absorption all party members gain a 20 percent elemental damage bonus for the corresponding absorb element during its duration right so it's pretty straightforward her constellations are c1 c2 or c4 okay and besides like c1 like it's not enough for you to like get back the ulti energy bro do you have any fucking idea how expensive is 80 energy it's literally a shell yeah it's literally a shell but a good thing is she can stack er okay so her weapons normally i will run her on sacrificial fragments because i get another chance to like to like add, use elemental skill, alright. So technically, I have three charges at C six, or C one. Okay, so for this, I'll be running ER because why? It's fucking eighty energy. Which fucking support have eighty energy and they only give you one charge at C zero. And the particles aren't enough to charge herself up. 
Yeah. So that's the biggest issue of all time. Without C1, C2, C4, C6, your sucrose is completely fucked. Because you don't have constellations. I've seen my friend who don't have C1 and he is still struggling in agony. And he doesn't have a Kazuha. Or a Venti. Yes, that's exactly the reason why I put her at A, not S. When people consider, like, they only consider the use, the utility of the character. They don't consider the fact that the strength of their utility at C0 and at other constellations. They only care about the end results. They don't care about the process. They don't care about other facts. Therefore, these two I'm putting at A for a specific reason. Not just like, ooh, she's good, I'll put her somewhere there. Finally, we have Diona. Why did I put her at S? It's actually pretty simple. Let's talk about talents. I have a C6, but I'm excluding all these facts. Okay? So, all, he do all she does is very simple. Her elemental skill just gives you shield. Okay? So, how long is the shield? So, the duration is like per paw. So, depends on whether you press or hold. So if you press, she fires off two paws. Okay, so two paws is like how much? 4.8. Okay, compared to the press duration, all right, you only have like 1.2 seconds of downtime. Okay, if you hold, she fires like five paws. Okay, so five paws is like, yeah, 12 seconds. So you only have like three seconds downtime. Okay, <clears throat> why do I keep mentioning this? It's because... If you if you really want to compare, okay, like four star, okay, let's talk about four stars who have a shield. There's definitely four stars who have a shield, okay, like Kirara, okay, we have Kirara, we have Xinyan, right, and we have Leila, okay, Noel, Toma, but he's on his elemental burst, yeah, and his shield needs to stack, okay, and Kea with constellations. If I'm not mistaken, it's like C2 or C4. Okay. Um, if Crystal Light counts as a shield. Okay, Yenfei at C4, I remember. Beidou at C1. Okay. And that's pretty much all. Excluding excluding five stars, okay. So why do I mention that? She is one of the very few characters in the whole fucking game. That can pro and as a four star, she can provide you a shield that isn't like that isn't a f squishy fragile shield, and at the same time she can also do healing. Okay, so how precious it is for you to find a four star that provides you a shield and a heal at the same time at zero constellations. No high constellations required. Yeah, how hard is it? How hard is it, bro? Just how hard is it? Like, I already showed you just now. Excluding 5 stars. It's so fucking hard to find a 4 star unit that provides you both utility functions that you find separately on character nowadays. That's how good her value is. At C0. Hi. Okay, so the fact that her shield is like not squishy, that it's like thirteen point seven percent max HP, right? According to you stacking full HP, there is the full HP. Yeah, this stack full HP, right? So this is just plus twenty percent. You can go to two plus two, forty percent HP. So you can go like around thirty, thirty two or thirty one. I forgot. Right. So, her shield is not, like, bad, okay? If you hold, the shield created by a hold attack will gain an extra 75% damage absorption bonus, right? So, this is, like, without constellations. Bro, without constellations, you get, you get a really fucking strong shield, and you get a continuous AoE heal of field, Okay? And the heal is like not low either. So mine is like level 9 with cons. Okay. So it's like 9%. So it's like if you have cons. 
like you can go up to like 11 11 i think which is like 10 percent so it's like you are healing average like what 1k yeah like around few few thousands at least few thousands okay cons including artifact status okay you 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 heal at least like thousands okay and the duration is like 12 seconds which is not short either so um her heal is over time so i'll just consider two seconds uh, to heal one time so she can heal a total of six times okay but longer heal time to trigger is also a good thing it's simple you get to make decision and sort which character decides to get the heal okay since the heal is like on field and also it only has a cool like cooldown of eight seconds with an energy cost of 80. it's fair enough because the elemental burst heals a ton okay and it has like shorter downtime but longer uptime okay and this energy can be solved by other issues also and also this elemental skill depends on press or hold they give you like less or more energy particles okay so her first ascension talent this is one of the most important ones characters shielded by icy paws have their movement speed increased by 10 percent and their stamina consumption decreased by 10 percent all right some some people might be like it's just 10 percent it doesn't really make much difference 10 percent is really f it's it's a lot when you are playing in a stamina consumption team like Hu Tao charge attack yan fei charge attack and other similar characters that consumes their stamina for like in exchange for damage output okay and also increase their movement speed by 10 percent some people might thought it's not a lot but when you actually have it you'll feel significant difference okay so at level 60 ascended opponents who enter the aoe of the elemental burst have 10 percent decreased damage for 15 seconds so reducing enemies attack at the same time also guarantees your own team's survivability okay so i believe i don't have to like continuously to say how good she actually is a four star unit at c0 she provide a shield she provide a heal she provides stamina consumption decrease and also movement speed and she also like decrease enemies like attack if when they enter the ulti field which if you stand in there you are completely fine so she already have like five features bro five fucking features on a c0 unit and i didn't even say about her constellations yet all right so let's go into our constellations so c1 it's already a really good constellations regenerates 15 energy for diona after the effects of signature mix n okay so how good is this her elemental burst is 80 so 15 just like just like save her burden okay so c2 increases the pause damage by 15 percent and increases its shield damage absorption by 15 percent so it's just now i said 75 percent another 15 percent so you get like 90 percent okay additionally when pause hit their targets creates a shield for other nearby characters on the field with 50 percent of ic pause shield damage absorption for five seconds so this is more to a co-op thing but the first half of this constellation is really important 75 percent plus 15 percent you get like around 90 percent which is actually insane okay bro this is just c2 okay c3 increases the elemental burst level by three so this allows you to like heal more for your team okay so c4 c4 is one of the like use useless constellation so within the radius of signature mix diona's charge attack for aim shots is reduced by 60 percent the only way i could think of this usage is um you shooting a rune guard's head or rune hunter's head okay so c5 increases your shield level by three which is important in multiple situations okay but if you don't have it it's fine too so c6 Characters within the elemental burst radius will gain the following effects based on their HP amounts. Okay, when the HP is below or equal to 50%, the incoming healing bonus of the character will be will be increased by 
if otherwise more than 50 or yeah they get plus 200 yen okay but despite cancelling all this her own set kit is actually pretty strong okay why do i say strong her scaling skills her like main point of sales the scaling all skills on hp like for example the shield skills on hp the healing skills on hp all right that's her whole point of sales and i believe most people they have a lot of hp percent artifacts i really don't have to mention all right people who farm artifacts they will actually like no okay yeah so technically sliding any hp on her will actually will just make it work you don't really have to care about set effects set effects is like just an add-on you don't if you don't have it it's fine if you have it just take it as an extra bonus okay and her weapons for bonus war bow bro you get this when you when you play genshin and you finish like the story quest or you hit ar20 if i'm not mistaken or somewhere there I remember they give you if you reach a certain level or you finish a certain quest they just give you this weapon and this weapon is like pretty simple okay so it just says like it gives you a ton of er at level 90 and the passive is crit hits have chance to generate a small amount of particles which will generate six energy for the character it can only occur once every nine seconds so i remember it will like generate uh how much six energy and every nine seconds so this is refinement three so a refinement one let me do reverse maths please so at refinement one is just 50 percent all right 50 percent of crit with like 12 seconds of downtime all right so 12 seconds of downtime so the whole duration is 15 seconds so i believe you can proc the downtime easily even though the crit hits like it's just 50 percent chance but you you are firing five ic pause okay so five ic pause if you have like at least 20 percent or no to not 20 percent you just any percent will will just make it crit yeah because you are somehow running her you can either choose to run her on another team which requires you requires you like crit hits or if you don't want to use like for bonus war bow you can just throw a sacrificial bow okay so you just get like double elemental skill which means like double the energy okay so for running for bonus war bow the only thing you need to burden about this is your crit rate okay so besides like 42 if you are running like cryo resonance you get another 15 for free so you get like 57 okay so this is like all the explanations about her okay so for those who are like still i disagree what i say in this video just go ahead and disagree i don't fucking care about your opinions anymore okay so this is the solid reason why i put her as s tier okay for those who for those who are beginners okay if you stand at the pov of a beginner player okay like literally you you are just a beginner you and then you got this tree somehow okay when you want tempo okay you just got this tree for somehow okay building official is a burden if you don't have constellations that's the first point okay second balancing her damage is one of the pain in the ass shit okay first you need to care about her crit rate okay second you need to care about crit damage third you need to care about her attack and er okay okay burden number one okay sucrose on the other hand, it's definitely worth building, but at the same time, you know farming artifacts are never a peaceful thing in Genshin. <coughs> Alright, and especially when she requires a specific set to make her work. I mean, other set will make her work too, but her best in slot is this Redescent Venera. And tell me how many players, beginners, can actually clear <coughs> the domain with ease and actually just get this artifact. Right, so I believe most people now will just go in strong box, and strong box chances are even harder when, like, they expect you to get like what EM EM piece or maybe like ER piece. Yeah, especially on a specific part of the artifacts. Right, and also the weapons are quite picky. It's either you give sacrificial fragments, or you give Ovonius codex. 
But the fact that you need to run for Venus Codex, like, you have to crit. If there are multiple enemies, it's fine. Because Sucrose is AoE. But what if there are only there's only one enemy? You're going to get fucked. Yeah, that's the that's the solid reason why I didn't put two of them at A. Because if you are a newbie or a beginner, those are the facts you need to consider for them. Do they have enough like power to do what we are doing? Because for us, for those who are like who have you you already have like base. You already have your base like account strength there. But for newbie and beginners, they are not. <clears throat> they're, they're definitely not, like, strong enough. Okay? Some of them even have problem clearing open world. I know for most of you, you are, you are just gonna be like, open world, open world, you can just one-shot. You can just one-shot them. You can even do big damages. But newbie and beginner, they just started the game, bro. What are you expecting them? You're expecting them to wail? To buy everything? To swipe the card? Is it? Like you swipe the card and you ask them to gacha and you gacha you use the stardust for exchange for more and stuff. Yeah, those are the facts you need to consider also. Diona on the other hand, she's like extremely easy to build. You can get a weapon for free. The artifacts aren't really like high requirements or so. Just slide HP onto her. You don't need anything much. Just HP, 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 HP. Yeah, even if it's offset, it still works. That's how... That's how worthy she is for a beginner or a newbie. Not only for them. Some people doing like... Some people who don't have like... A really strong shield like Zhongli. Okay? Or a really strong heal like Kokomi. They can also use Diona. So that's how good her value actually is. Yes. So this is the reason why I put Diona at S. But Sucrose and Fischl at A tier. If all of them are under C0 state. If C6, then all of them are going like S. Okay, that's all I want to say about this video. Right, thank you very much for watching.